students from Allegheny College are at the Robert Jackson Center. And they're under an internship program which the uh, Allegheny College has worked uh, with uh, Robert Jackson Center. What is it that you hope to accomplish through, this is really kind of a novel class up here, from your position uh, through the CPP, and maybe you can explain a little bit about that, uh, how, how that all is hope to accomplish. Well, I think it's a, it's a wonderful partnership, and I thank you for your leadership in uh, making it happen. I hope that what this partnership will allow us to do is a number of things, all inconsistent with our mission. I think one, it's my hope that students will be able to do research on the writings of Justice Jackson, do research on the workings of the Supreme Court, work with distinguished scholars in doing that. I think that's fundamental to our mission. I hope that they also have the opportunity to see the life of Justice Jackson, the course of his life, uh, the challenges he faced in his life, the sacrifices he made. You know, at times in his career, you know, he could have taken a path that perhaps made more sense, but for service to country, went in a different direction. I think to examine his writings, uh, although I'm not a scholar, Justice, I have read his writings, and in their extraordinary, they're, they are so pointed, and yet, I don't want to say simple, but there's a dignity in the directness of how he wrote on, on very significant issues of justice. And I think I, it's our hope that we can have our students and through them others have the opportunity to engage those, those writings and that thought, that judicial thought. And then I think there's, a, there's another piece. I think our institutions will rise together. They're both, if you think about Chautauqua, the Jackson Center, Allegheny, all of us in, in many ways are connected to the history of this country and the history of ideas in this country. And I'd like to find way, continued ways that uh, our institutions can work together to advance both that sense of history and the engagement of ideas in a civil and disciplined manner. I want to go back. So thanks for coming. Uh, one of the, in the, his earlier remarks, Greg was far too generous, I think, in terms of placing um, um, the responsibility for the development of this at, at largely in my feet. I don't think that's the case. Um, there are uh, Greg and Cindy and, and, and Phil and Jim and Deb uh, and many others have been instrumental in making this partnership, um, I think, uh, work so far. And we have such high hopes for it, largely because of the quality of the ideas and the energies that people bring to this project. And um, the, I think the reason that I'm excited by it and have energy for it is because it tapped into a latent excitement anyway. I, I'm, this is only my fourth year at the college. I was at Southern Illinois University, actually with Kevin's father. Uh, uh, for uh, seven or eight years before coming to Allegheny. But during that time, I've always fought constitutional law. Jackson was a central figure in whether it's constitutional law powers or civil rights and civil liberties, whichever course I was teaching. There's Jackson fitted centrally in both, uh, whether it's the Barnett decision in, in civil liberties or whether it's, uh, you know, it's, it's Youngstown sheet and tube in power. So he's there, he's the central figure. Uh, in many of those cases. And, uh, you know, we don't get the Civil Rights Act of 1964 without that contribution in some respects. And so Jackson was always a part of my academic life and my own scholarly interest, not just my teaching, but my scholarly interest. My, my research is really focusing on uh, separation of powers, uh, presidential power and uh, congressional oversight of the executive. And so I'm working on a book now um, dealing with executive power. And again, Jackson is in my first chapter. And it's, and it's not because of this affiliation. It, that he was going to be in that first chapter anyway. And so that this collaboration is moving forward is just another dimension that's deeply meaningful uh, professionally, but also personally. And then, of course, uh, once Greg found out about that excitement, there was, there was no stopping the, the truck. Uh, and so that's, and it's, and it, it has, uh, as I said, made it 
just a, a really wonderful experience for me. And I think uh, largely has to do with, with the people with whom I've come into contact through that experience. So thank you all for being here and for being a part of that. Uh, is um, now an, can, I, can I interject some? Because the interns may not know this, but we had lunch with the president of the college this summer. Greg, what, in, uh, at probably four or five alumni. Mm -hmm. And you know what? The, what was mostly spoken about the whole time, the whole lunch, was this internship program for the president of your college. So you, you may not know he's watching you, and I don't want to make you know this, <laughs> but he's watching. 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 Everybody say, President Mullen is the greatest president. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, 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 that's, that's actually really useful, Bruce, because it's, it starts us off in, I think, what I want to yeah. present now, because this partnership fits in with larger emphases at the college. I mean, there are, there are, um, there are priorities of the college, and priorities of the president, but also the faculty and, and, and administration of the college, that this really figures rather prominently in. And so I'd like to talk a little bit about how this fits, how this collaboration fits with college. So forgive the PowerPoint. Um, and I hope you all can see it, because it, it's kind of wordy at the start, but it won't last, uh, I promise. Uh, as some of you may know, this is Brooks Hall. Uh, the Center for Political Partic Participation, where John's a fellow, uh, and, and I, where I direct, actually occupies this space down here. So. Uh, Brooks Hall is you know, obviously where the, all the students go for, for eating, and very few of them ever wander into our, uh, our wing when we're there. Well, I used to. Cindy lived there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, we locked that door back. Okay. You're out on the hill. There's ways to get around. You need to <laughs> Some well, I, can, <laughs> I thought it might be fun to have this shot. So, yeah. Yeah. so the scene, it evokes yeah, too yeah. many memories. <laughs> well, you'll never get used to it. Did you start? All right. So <laughs> these, this is these are the emphases of the college. I say this: uh, civic learning. Uh, I, I sit on the curriculum committee of the college, and we're reorganizing the curriculum right now. And one of the ways we're reorganizing, we're not, we're not getting rid of the broad strokes, but we're proposing. <laughs> requirements, specific requirements. Among them is the civic <laughs> requirement. That, uh, and it, it, the idea is that civic learning captures two dimensions. One dimension is specific civic engagement activities where students are heading into the community, perhaps doing service learning work or interning at the Jackson Center, for example, or working in, uh, with uh, low-income housing in the Meadville area, what have you. And that's a sort of a traditional understanding of what civic engagement can still remains a, a core part of the Allegheny experience. What we're proposing is that we also add on to that dimension, the civic engagement dimension, this civic, civic learning uh, dimension, the civic learning uh, part, which is actually about being mindful, civically mindful, socially responsible, that it doesn't require one to uh, perhaps go into a community uh, and serve in, in the traditional sense, but one can be civically mindful as a physicist, one can be civically mindful as a chemist. One can be civically mindful of the ends to which their, their, uh, uh, their, their studies uh, are directed. And so we're about the CPP, we don't really take students out into the community to work with low-income housing, as I said. Right? What we're about is about cultivating civic mindfulness across all college programs and departments. And so the Center for S Political Participation has been reconceived. It's 10 years old. It was initially founded strictly as an electoral uh, engagement kind of office, so encouraging uh, college students to become more involved in electoral politics. And we still have that component to us, but we've reconceived what participation could include to be much more broadly focused. That uh, the idea at the CPP is that democracy demands more than turning out to vote, right? Voting is a necessary but not sufficient condition for sustaining democratic uh, structures. And so commitment to principles of citizenship and responsibility really inform much of our programming the CPP. So we do uh, 
programs in, in uh, voting and in, in electoral engagement, but really we're conceiving of it quite broadly. So we have five issue areas at the center. We retain the electoral participation component that we've historically had. The college has been wonderfully successful, the CPP has been really successful and nationally recognized for that work. But we've added these four other dimensions. Global engagement, law and justice, policy and, and journalism or civic media. The Jackson Center sits at the heart of at least two of those new dimensions. And so the collaboration that we're developing is the central component if, I think the central component, John, perhaps you would agree. I mean, it's really shaping all that we're doing in many ways. Outside of, of you know, perhaps not so much an electoral context, but pretty much everything else the Jackson Center's been a part of. Uh, and this collaboration has been felt by the Allegheny community in this context. So, this collaboration, as I said, as you know, is, is quite new, but we've actually, in the last year, had some pretty exciting things happen. And so, in the, the area of international law or global engagement and law and justice, the, the, the programming has been uh, pretty robust. We've had, as a, as a result of the International Humanitarian Law Dialogues last year, uh, we had the occasion to meet Ambassador David Sheffer, who then graciously, because Greg was there and said, you will do this, right, uh, Ambassador David? So he agreed to come to campus to keynote our conference on corporate social responsibility. Uh, this was a, a conference that we had, a two-day conference. Uh, Dan, you were able to come uh, to, to that, and, and Jim was there, and Greg, uh, a number of others were there. But it was really one of the, the uh, it was, it was timed. We, had, we thought we had it. The alien tort statute was before the court, the Supreme Court. Uh, we thought the decision would be coming down in April, and we missed it by a month and a half. Uh, but. The idea was <clears throat> to have them reflect on what's the, what's the future of the alien tort statutes. You know, the alien tort statute allowed for uh, 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 crimes that were sort of uh, uh, abuses of, of humanitarian law to be brought before federal courts, uh, whether they occur, occur anywhere else in the world. And so the court ended up limiting uh, the statute and its applicability in federal courts. But we had uh, David Sheffer, we had uh, Carolyn Cave from Northwestern University School of Law, and Dwayne Windsor from Rice University uh, Business School talking about what's the future of international humanitarian law and civil uh, context, given what's likely to happen with alien tort. It was a really great occasion. Uh, and here's uh, Ambassador Sheffer giving a talk at Fort Chapel the first night of the conference. What we did was, uh, uh, Greg actually introduced uh, the ambassador for us. And there's Professor Sedek, and I thought it's appropriate to include a, a live action photo of Professor <laughs> Sedek. And as Carolyn gave me, the next day we had a panel discussion on uh, Alien Tour, uh, which was actually, I think, the best uh, part of it. I mean, the ambassador's talk was wonderful, but the next day, with the give and take question and answer, it was almost a town hall kind of atmosphere <coughs> around the event. And uh, she, in particular, uh, I thought really stole the show. Uh, really capable. And here's a professor of economics. Uh, prior to the event, we wanted to generate student interest. I mean, not everyone, the alien tort statute doesn't really roll off the tongue for a lot of our students, um, even in, in the economics department. And so we had a professor of economics from Nigeria, which is the case, uh, the origin of the case that was before the Courtney Kyobel decision against World Death Shelf Petroleum, talking about the local context and how this case came to be and, and, and who the, the principal players were and how it fit within uh, uh, the Sub-Saharan Africa generally. And so that was really useful to generate some interest and background information. And then we had the panelists talking about the case. Uh, and, of, and of course, we, you know, we packed the room. It was just a really good event. And we did that largely uh, by requiring it. But I think there was some stuff. <laughs> there was also some stuff. Uh, and so that was, the, that was one thing. So we had, we had two large events that the CPP ran in collaboration with uh, the Jackson Center. That was one of them, the, the uh, International Humanitarian Law one. And then we have this one that, that picks up on our journalism and democracy focus, the, the civic media uh, dimension. It's a, it was a conference called Documents of War, the Ethics and Challenges of Visual Storytelling. And so uh, this we have a new program at the college, a new minor on uh, journalism in the public interest. 
which is not necessarily like a pre-journalism program. It's not meant to be uh, pre-professional in that sense. It's rather the study of journalism, the, 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 the study of, of uh, how we consume news and how news is presented and that's all. And so this was really the rollout of that new minor. Uh, we also have a, the, the person, the, 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 the professor who's largely in charge of that new minor is a, a woman who was embedded with the striker brigade in Afghanistan as a photojournalist and was able to uh, relate personal stories about those experiences. And so we put together, along with uh, two-time Pulitzer Prize winning uh, photojournalist Craig Walker from the Denver Post, put together this program for our students. And I think, uh, I'll, I'll speak for myself, it was the best thing I've ever seen at the college. No doubt. Best thing I've ever seen on campus. Uh, it was a really remarkable <coughs> event. Uh, and the poster was kind of sharp, too. And then as part of this, uh, the, the collaborative dimension with the Jackson Center was not just uh, the rated aria photographs, which really were, we had to blind out in the, in the lobby of the Vukovic uh, Center for, for Communica Communication Arts, uh, which may be new to some of you. It's a brand new building. It's a, uh, it's a uh, beautiful space. But this lobby area was just lined with the photographs that are down in the auditorium. And the Jackson Center loaned them to us. Uh, for the for the week, and we had them up uh, for for two or three days, and then conveyed them back to the Jackson Center. And then we created this poster here to talk about what uh, who Dario was, what why these images are, are consequential, why they're they're relevant to to the work of a photojournalist. And there's an interesting dynamic here because many of the photos were commissioned by the U.S. Army, and so they were not exactly photojournalistic. But then there was these other photos that he took that were on display here in the, in the, in the center that were reflective of his own eye, you know, that, that were only for his own use, of personal photographs, and they were on display as well. Very different kinds of images. And so, um, and that was something that we reflected on as, uh, through the course of the conference as well. And here's uh, Ken Cobry, who is, uh, if you've ever taken a photojournalism class, you used his textbook. He's a professor at uh, San Francisco State University and literally wrote the book on photojournalism. And he was a uh, are to start. He also uh, put together a documentary, so it was a, uh, a, a conference on, on documentary and photojournalism. And here are the two embeds. Uh, 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 J.R. Anchetta as a student at uh, University of Alaska, along with Cheryl Hatch, the professor I mentioned before. They were embedded together with the Striker Brigade in Afghanistan. Um, and there are some of the images as they, so as they were talking about uh, their experience being embedded. Uh, show images. And here's Craig Walker. Really, uh, I think when I say this is the best thing I've ever seen in Allegheny, he's why, uh, in my judgment. Uh, this was this was a really deeply affecting presentation that he gave. This fellow in the image here is a uh, he won a Pulitzer Prize for this story that he did on uh, he won two, but uh, this was a person he followed after his return from Afghanistan, uh, serving in, in, in Afghanistan. Uh, suicidality issues, PTSD, and so forth, documenting his return. Really uh, deeply moving and, and important talk. And then here uh, is Pamela Yates, documentarian. Uh, we were connected to through the Jackson Center. Uh, she uh, did a documentary on, uh, with Papa De on, uh, on uh, 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 Guatemala and Rio Smont. And right just two weeks, she was with us two weeks before the trial began against Riesmont in Guatemala. Uh, and she was shared with us her documentary and talked about making of the documentary, but also talked about civil war in Guatemala. And then, so that was, as I said, a, the, the, a really wonderful event. Now that's what we did last year. Those are the two big things that we collaborated on on campus last year. I would say what's not included in this, regrettably, I uh, didn't have... Uh, uh, images available was Craig's big presentation for Constitution Day, uh, which was uh, well attended. And <laughs> I said, actually, that was the most important thing we did all year. Yeah. And that was forced attendance as well. <laughs> <laughs> but it was obligatory for us to do it. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, at least we had to enforce it that way. <laughs> so those are, those are, a crowd is a crowd is a crowd. So I'd say in addition to these big events, these big conferences, national draw, uh, at least regional coverage and attention, uh, was really important for the college. But in addition, we have these ongoing things that, that matter, in addition to the internship programs, to be these undergraduate research opportunities. 
And here, I, this part of this list is aspirational, part of this list is uh, reflecting on what we've already done in collaboration with the Jackson Center. But as um, a constitutional law professor and, and interested in separated powers, there are lots of opportunities for undergraduate research and linking the archive and the, and the Jackson Center with, uh, with comps, with summer research opportunities, whether it's happening as part of the internship experience or independent from the internship experience. So there are you know, historical, biographical, uh, uh, as well as jurisprudential, doctrinal, all of these different, uh, and it's not, this list is not exhaustive by any means, but that's just what occurred to me is these are things that we've done before. These are comps that students have done that are related to Jackson. Uh, in some way. The, the, Brian, yeah. what is jurisprudential? Um, that would be, uh, well, let's be a guy. Uh, you philosophy, took philosophy, philosophy, philosophy of law, law. Yeah. Philosophy of law. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And so it would be. That works too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's good. So <laughs> it would be uh, reflecting on, uh, you know, the, the, it wouldn't have to be directly linked to Jackson either. I mean, this is, has bearing on Jackson's legacy. Um, you know, placing Jackson in a jurisprudential context. So, looking at Jackson's writings through a natural law or positivist or whatever. Um, and then, of course, the, you know, Jackson really figures prominently in just some of these other areas. Um, you know, I didn't even, I didn't even look at, I didn't even mention civil liberties, right? But that, of course, that would be a big one as well. So, anyway, these are the kinds of things that I think we can look forward to and have some some background with student research in those areas as well in the past, as an attentive student. <laughs> uh, that, but then I think the really exciting area, so uh, as constitutional law professor, much like you know, Nixon could go to China, I can say I think this is more exciting in some ways uh, in terms of opportunities for undergraduate research and scholarly activity by faculty. Uh, I, as the only constitutional law professor, there's really only me doing the jurisprudential stuff and everything else. But here, this implicates the whole range of programs at the in a way that the domestic, the, that the, the constitutional lawyer uh, dimension of, of, of Jackson doesn't implicate the rest of the campus. And so I see in here opportunities for humanitarian intervention, comps, and, and faculty research. Obviously, international criminal law, no question. Again, the historical, biographical, and curatorial interests, transitional justice that's moving from civil war, for example, into a, a, a kind of democratic peace context. International norms or standards treaties and so forth, we have faculty who do all of these issues, but we haven't linked those energies and, and scholarly interests to the work of the center yet in, in the way that I think we perhaps could. Uh, and so that's, in some respect, again, aspirational, but in, in, to some degree, these, these are already happening. There's a colleague of mine in the department who desperately wants to connect with the Jackson Center, but she's on maternity leave right now, so she can't be here. But she does. She does uh, transitional justice and humanitarian intervention. That's her scholarly work. But I don't think she's really come up here and explored what the opportunities are for her here. Uh, and so that's an important thing that we need to be uh, attentive to as well on, on our campus. And then, of course, drawing from the, uh, the you know, just, just the, the, the wonderful occasion of being you know, peripheral to this program as attendees, but it's, as I was telling Greg earlier, it's central to the excitement of our students. I, mean, they, I, I bring students up, we brought about a dozen students up uh, just a couple weeks ago, and it's the van ride back. That's just, that's the most remarkable occasion when they say, I have a comp idea. Right? I just spent time with Brenda Hollis. I just, right? And this, these are the occasions where it's really pretty wonderful to be a professor and not have had anything to do with that, what happened, but to see the excitement and the reward uh, uh, that they feel for having had a conversation with Fatou Batsuda, uh, in which she says, you know, you ought to think about coming to The Hague sometime. Right? Or, or um, to, to Asaniello, to, to say, you know, if, if you, to, uh, at some point you might want to consider being an intern uh, in Rwanda. Right? I mean, these are, these are not the kinds of conversations that most undergraduates have uh, at their own at institutions other than Allegheny. So we're really grateful for the occasion to attend this. And then, of course, as we heard uh, from, from the interns around the room, the internship program. These, I don't think any of these were interns, so don't look for interns in this crowd. Uh, but this, uh, they're here with, uh, uh, with David Crane uh, at the Warren event uh, last year, uh, where there was the panel discussion, of the, the, I think it was the, the, the showing of the documentary, I think was the occasion. 
But again, the same kind of effect uh, occurs. I mean, for the for the student, the set of students to have a time to interact with, with David Crane, it's the same effect as being in the law dialogues. I mean, there's a real sense of, of, uh, of consequence uh, that I think I feel, certainly, and I suspect our students feel by having meaningful conversations where they're taken seriously by people who have practiced this all their lives. And of course, there's a, uh, a, a CPP fellow, uh, Aurora, here uh, in, in conversations uh, at the International Humanitarian Law Dialogue. And now, looking to the future. So those are the, the kinds of things we've been doing programmatically, uh, whether it's the conferences or whether it's comps or summer research. But here are some of the directions that we thought might be possible. And again, not an exhaustive list, but uh, at least from my perspective, seem to be the low-hanging fruit, right? the, the kinds of, of collaborative uh, programming that, that uh, might make sense. But again, it's up for conversation. I certainly welcome your thoughts on this and, and suggestions or critiques. The first, uh, in some respects, these are a varying uh, 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 depth, right? The, the annual Jackson lecture and dinner. I know that some version of that happens in multiple different contexts. Albany has one, right? There are all different kinds of things. But it, you know, for for the for Allegheny College to have an occasion to reflect on Jackson. To have students, to have alums, to have practitioners, to have all kinds of people come to campus, have a sustained conversation with whether it's an interview, a lecture, a series, a panel leading up to a dinner, something, some discrete occasion to reflect on Jack uh, on campus would really be, uh, I think, a wonderful opportunity. So that's something we'd like to develop, yet we, we have not done so. This I'm really excited about, which is the uh, Jackson Senior Project Program. There's no, I haven't come up with a fancier name for it. Uh, but it would be a third reader. So you all have, who have done comps, remember there were two readers on your comp. This would be a non-evaluative third reader. And so to use the resources and context, the Rolodex of the Jackson Center, to find third readers for senior uh, comps, which would mean, for example, if we, you know, if we gave a stipend to uh, uh, to you know, David Crane you know, to be a third reader on a student's comp on international criminal law, uh, and just just to, a, a, a nod to his time for the, to read chapters, give feedback, Skype in for defense. I think that would be a really a really great uh, opportunity. Maybe bring him back if we have the funding to, to bring him back to campus for a period uh, to reflect with students on these issues. So I'm really excited about that. In fact, we have one already lined up with a federal judge in Chicago that Phil has organized for us. Uh, students working on uh, a comp and executive power uh, under my direction. And the federal judge, Susan Cox, has agreed to be a third reader on that comp. I mean, I think it's a great opportunity. It's the first one we've done. We'll see how it goes. Um, I don't know how students feel about it yet. I guess I should ask. Uh, but <laughs> this is just another veto point. But it's not evaluated, right? Uh, yeah. Um, we'll see. It's not a moment of being intimidated. That's cool. <laughs> uh, and then there, I think there are just ongoing opportunities for connections with the library and the gallery. Uh, the uh, perhaps more so the library uh, than the, than the gallery, but uh, certainly both. There's been Doug Neckers, a board member of the Jackson Center, has been in conversations with Linda Bills, the director of our library, about uh, perhaps thinking through what it might be for the Allegheny Library to house some uh, Jackson-focused materials. Uh, you know, not the primary source materials, perhaps, but the but to be in connection with the Jackson Center in some relevant way. I'm not quite sure where those conversations stand, but they're very beginning, very preliminary. But that might be coming. Her response was, we'd love to. Allegheny ought to do that kind of thing. It's just a lot of money to do that. Uh, and so we, we, we try to put those conversations on hold, as I understand. <laughs> Jackson Center Scholars Program, uh, Robert H. Jackson Scholars Program. These would be identifying students who have some interest in whether it's international law or, or, or constitutional law, um, prospective students, and assisting them in coming to Allegheny being linked to the Jackson Center in a meaningful way each of their four years they're here and over the summers. Uh, again, sort of a, a sustained program, sustained attention to Jackson in their own scholarly interest. And then, of course, uh, I think linked to this third reader program would be 
uh, scholar in residence kind of uh, arrangement, where we might bring people in for a short course, whether it's a week long or two weeks long, uh, to uh, uh, Professor uh, Jim Johnson uh, from from uh, Case Western might come for two weeks uh, to teach a class on, on on law of war or what have you. So those are the opportunities there, whether they be. Uh, practitioners, or whether the pre-docs or post-docs, so people who have are about to engage in their in their uh, doctoral uh, work, or have just completed a dissertation, or working on their dissertation, their ADD is what we call them. Uh, they come for cheap, <laughs> but they come because there's the Jackson connection, and that might be uh, worth pursuing as well. And then I think this is again kind of a low-hanging fruit idea that my colleague in the political science department, who's doing humanitarian intervention, who's doing transitional justice issues. And she could use funding to, to support course modification, travel to Nuremberg or wherever uh, uh, to, to pursue that research. And so there are course modifications or research opportunities available through a faculty development program. So those are the, I think those are the, the six areas, uh, and there are some of them are, are, I think, can be more immediate emphases, and others are more long-term development, like the Palatier Library idea, right? more long-term. But... Uh, I think that's the kind of that's the that, those are the emphases where uh, we're sort of placing our energies at this point, um, and certainly want feedback from you as to whether these are, are going to be uh, working for you. And then finally, uh, I don't mean to take too much time here, but the uh, CPP, in addition to overseeing the Jackson affiliation, um, is in charge for the next two years of all programming at the college connected to the bicentennial celebrations. You know, the college celebrates its two hundredth anniversary. Uh, I, along with a colleague from the English department, have put together, and uh, I gave out this note card here, uh, the first year so far, 2013, 2014, the 50th anniversary of the Civil Rights Act of 1964. Next year, we're doing voting rights and democratic participation. Uh, and so the emphasis of this year, we have you know, a series of speakers coming to reflect on the legacy of civil rights, all culminating in a under, national undergraduate conference on civil rights where we have five internationally renowned scholars and from philosophy, political science, history, uh, literature, women's studies, all coming to reflect on campus with students who are completing undergraduate research projects related to civil rights. That's the culminating event this coming year. Next year, we have the Voting Rights and Democratic Participation Conference. We're, we're replicating the whole thing uh, the next year, but with a focus on voting rights. Uh, which you might think would be kind of a fool's errand given what the court just did to the Voting Rights Act. But actually, there's a lot more litigation happening now in some respects under uh, Section 3, right? which is a different section of the Voting Rights Act than what the court did with Section 4. And so there's, there's a lot out there, uh, uh, certainly in Texas and Arizona and other cases that are still in, in the works. Um, and Eric Holder right, just came out uh, and, and, and uh, is going to, to move forward on those claims. And so we have lined up right now uh, John Aldrich. Some of you may know John, uh, 1967 graduate of the college. Probably the most consequential political scientist in the last 50 years. Uh, he was a major, major figure in political science, and he's in Allegheny Zone. He's also president of the American Political Science Association. He has agreed to be the convener for this, for this conference for us. Uh, the convener for this conference will be uh, James Nash and Lucius Outlaw. Uh, James Nash was a, a, a very prominent figure in the, in the uh, civil rights movement, and Lucius Outlaw is a critical race theorist, uh, very well-known uh, figure. So anyway, those are the two uh, big events coming from the college that implicate CPP and, and Jackson programming. And then, of course, this is an invitation to be connected to us, come back and visit with us as these people do. This, these are the principal funders of the CPP. Uh, and so any programming we do with the Jackson Center comes through the CPP budget. Uh, uh, and so it's, it's essentially what's happening now. It, these are, uh, uh, most of these people I think are, are alums. Uh, this is the, the Michael Schmidt uh, endowment group. And so these are the people who gather together every year in honor of uh, 1973 graduate Mike, Michael Schmidt. Uh, to, to uh, at the, super, the time of the Super Bowl, they all get together to uh, reflect on his life and, and then contribute to the center and have wine and beer. Uh, but that's it. So, so that's my that's our that's our presentation. So, the story is is that the 
from the Allegheny perspective, the affiliation resides in the Center for Political Participation, but it's broader than that. I mean, I think, I think there's a home for the, for the affiliation in every program and every department. Um, we just have to take advantage of those energies. So thanks for being here and, and uh, sitting through that.